Recently, I got to appear on the Go All In podcast hosted by Robert Bruss. Now, the way that all came together was Robert was connected with me on LinkedIn and he was seeing the content that I was producing. He also watched some of my YouTube videos and he thought my message would be a good fit for his audience on the Go All In podcast. Now we had lots of great discussions around the world of social media. We focused a lot on creating video content as well. Also, we spoke about generating leads and increasing your sales for your business or brand. So let's go to that podcast now where you can watch the whole episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button here to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all of my video content just like this. I release videos every Wednesday and I don't want you to miss out on them. Tick the little bell icon as well, that way you get notified each time I upload one of these videos. Welcome to the Goal In Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Russ, and I'm proud to be bringing you these stories of everyday heroes right here in Sydney, Australia. Today on the show, our guest is Mark Warnikin. And we're going to do the show a little bit differently today because Mark's here in the studio with me uh, right here in Cronulla. So we're doing this face to face and it's going to be a little bit different. We're not going to do this uh, over Zoom. So I'm looking forward to the different dynamic that you have when somebody's there with you. Before we kick off the show today, if you're a first time listener, welcome to the Goal In Podcast. It's great to have you here. And if you're returning back for some more, welcome back. We love our repeat offenders here at the Goal In Podcast. Now, one last thing before we get started, just take a little peek at your phone and hit that subscribe button on the app that you're listening in on, and that way you'll never miss an episode of the Golden Podcast. And if you like what you hear today, don't forget to share this episode with your friends and family. That way you can share a little bit of the go all in love and share that around. All right, if you're in business, if you're thinking about starting a business or you're in a business development or a sales role of any type, then you're going to want to listen in really closely to this podcast. As you'll hear, Mark is an expert in social media marketing, especially on LinkedIn. And on today's show, he's not only going to share with us his goal in story, but he's going to share plenty of valuable insights on how you can use video to grow your business, your brand, and ultimately bring in more sales. It's estimated by 2020, which is just next year, that over 80% of the content on the internet is going to be video. So whether you like it or not, video is the new norm. It's becoming very apparent that if you're in business or in a sales role of any type, you're gonna to have to learn to get comfortable in front of the camera. Most importantly, you need to show people that you know how to have some fun in front of the camera and you know how to communicate your message effectively. Your customers are already expecting it now and if you don't hop on board this train, you're gonna get left behind. Mark, welcome to the show, mate. It's great to have you here. I love to discuss things, all, all things marketing and all things futurism. It's uh, really great to have you in the studio. Thank you, Robert, and thank you for the invite. And it was glad that we were able to find that we um, only lived about one kilometre apart. Isn't that amazing? It's a small world, for sure. That's that's absolutely for sure. So uh, it's good to have you here. Before we kick off the show and get into the, the Go All In mindset and all the things that Go All In is, let's get a little bit of background on you. Why don't you tell the listeners uh, where are you from and, and what's your background and what are you working on at the moment? Okay, I'm a Sydney local, Sydney, Australia, and um, I've had a... In very enjoyable, I suppose, 25, 35, or 25 to 30 years in corporate sales. That has been my, my, my early part of my career and thoroughly enjoyed that. So I understand the struggles that business owners and brands and whatever market you're in, um, I understand the struggles that you, you have on a daily basis of trying to generate leads and, and increase sales because that, that has been literally my whole working life. Um, but I reinvented myself a few years ago. Um, once the, I, I, I finally uncovered and, 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 and opened up my eyes to the amazing world of social media, I, 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 I thought it was, a, it, was a, it was an opportunity for me to utilize my selling skills and, and into the modern media of social media. And um, I kicked all that off with um, LinkedIn um, and um, maintained or, or generated some expertise in that platform. And that's now evolved over the last few years to also include Facebook and YouTube and and Instagram and Twitter. So um, yeah, it's a very exciting time to be uh, in business and a very exciting time to be alive in the world as well. Yeah, absolutely, couldn't agree more. You've got a big following on LinkedIn, right? It's like 19 or 20,000 people there. Yeah, I just ticked over the 20,000 first level connections on LinkedIn and 
LinkedIn's one of my most favorite platforms because coming from a corporate sales environment um, where you literally have to make you know, 20, 50, 100 phone calls, emails every day, it's a never ending battle to, to do that. But LinkedIn's an absolutely brilliant tool and, and, and I'm here today because Robert actually found me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So the favorite way that I have to describe LinkedIn is I, I like to say invisible becomes visible. Um, and as I say, I'm here today because Robert was able to find me via LinkedIn. We found that we not only lived in the same city, but literally in the same suburb. And I could have actually walked around here today, but I didn't walk around. So, <laughs> yeah, but LinkedIn's been um, an amazing platform for me, and I get contacted pretty much every day via it. Absolutely. What, uh, when you were working in corporate sales, what were you selling? Um, it was a whole range. It was um, uh, short sales cycle, it was longer sales cycles, it was the motor industries, it was the office product industry, it was the IT industry, um, it was the um, transport and freight industry. So it's a, it's a varied, um, I suppose, career in corporate sales and that was selling and obviously sales manager and state manager as, as you grow a little bit older and progress your career. But the fundamentals of selling um, uh, are, are similar across all platforms. You know, it's lots and lots of effective activity. It's 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 building rapport. It's opening up the lines of communication, um, being able to then you know deliver a solution with a quote or a or whatever, and then um, closing the sale. And the number one tip that most salespeople don't get the sale is because they don't ask for the sale. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, never I forget, would agree with that. Never yeah. forget to ask for the sale. <laughs> Fair for me, sales is near and dear to my heart. I've been. Uh, an entrepreneur for a long time now and and you have to master the art of sale, selling and mm. and of sales you've just got no choice you yeah. just get left behind and in a hyper competitive world you better get bloody good at selling because you're a commodity mm. and if your service or product is a commodity commodity then consumers really have a choice so you better be on point to be able to deliver and to be able to handle their stuff the biggest mistake that i made in my sales career i think and i've said it a couple of times on this podcast and i'm 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 uh, very, very human when it comes to this. I just was talking to the wrong people for a long time. I thought I was talking to decision makers, but it always seemed to go up and down the, the management chain. And I realized after years and years, I just wasn't speaking to the right people. And I became very forceful in who I was speaking to. And are you the decision maker? Are you the one that's going to write the check or do the bank transfer? And once I started doing that, I started to make a whole lot more sales. There's nothing wrong with my sales technique, nothing wrong with my products or services. It was just talking to the wrong people. It's a common mistake, right? It is. It's the most important part of the sales process. <laughs> the most important part is qualifying. Yeah. Because if you can't qualify your, your customer or opportunity or prospect, then you can't, um, I suppose, offer you the correct solution. But equally, um, coming back to what Robert was saying, if you're not really dealing with the ultimate decision maker, quite often you then have to go through two, three or four um, meetings because you you weren't you know at the right level and and I found that out very early in my career when I um, was in the motor industry um, the motor industry doesn't have a very good reputation for various reasons but it is a great industry and I had a very good sales manager who taught me um, you know the qualifying process was the most important and quite often you'd get a, a two people walk in maybe a husband and wife maybe females or maybe two males or whatever it may be but the simple question of asking Who's going to be the main driver <laughs> of the car? Yeah. Then you were, then you knew who you were able to focus a little bit more of your attention on because a rookie mistake, and especially for a lot of young people, and it was very sexist, I suppose, at the time, a husband and wife would walk in and the salesperson or the uneducated salesperson would possibly redirect their, um, their conversation or their selling more towards the male. Mm -hmm. And it's a rookie mistake. Whereas in fact, it might've been the, the wife or the female who was going to be the main driver. So that very simple one, who's gonna be the main driver of the car? And I've never forgotten it. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's a simple explanation of being able to correctly qualify. Yeah. yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. Well, Mark, thank you for sharing a little bit of your background with us and letting us get to know you a little bit like that. People come on over to the Go All In podcast to learn more about mm -hmm. others that have gone all in. So if you could, mate, could you please Share with us and with the audience your biggest goal in story or stories and the lessons that you've learned from your commitment to success. I will give you two stories. I suppose the biggest go all in um, story was firstly mastering the art of LinkedIn. I came from a corporate sales background, 
but for most of that time, I have used LinkedIn this much. None, not now, at all. None. <laughs> for people who aren't watching the video, I put up a zero sign. <laughs> I'd effectively gone most of my sales career without even understanding what LinkedIn was. And it, I was actually so bad, I used to call it LinkedIn. Right. <laughs> so there you go. And it's amazing now that I get interviewed and, 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 and have corporate clients and my own clients online and around the world, and I actually teach LinkedIn. So I suppose for me, it was um, coming from an older style, so background really having to embrace social media embrace change um, so it, it, it was a struggle initially but then the light bulbs just kept going off going this is amazing this is this platform is truly amazing so that was probably my first one foray into the world of social media um, as my career through LinkedIn and then some of the other platforms started to evolve and come through most recently probably in the last 12 months another aha moment has been mastering YouTube and video content. Mm -hmm. um, as Robert said at the start, and he used one of the lines that I mentioned, by 2020, 80% of all online traffic and very much in the social media world will be video content. So I'm reinventing myself again, um, mastering the art of YouTube, um, but there are various ways to create engaging um, YouTube videos or engaging videos on any of the platforms. Mm -hmm. um, there's no use just recording lots and lots of videos if they're not going to get watched, and, and that is a big common mistake. So, mm -hmm. learning LinkedIn and, and now learning YouTube and video is um, two of those biggest things that I'm most pleased with that I've been able to push through on. Very nice. So the the goal, the goal in podcasts is is often often about transition, mm -hmm. and often that transition is from a job to a business or from a business sometimes back to a job because it didn't work and. And sometimes it's a, it's about health and entrepreneurialism and a whole range of things. And you touched on there that you kind of had to learn LinkedIn. You hadn't done anything like that. But were you using that in your sales career or was that as a transition out of your sales career and then into working for yourself? Very much. I, I, very much I, my, my whole sales and corporate and corporate sales career, I, I barely used LinkedIn at all. I no, never, no need? Well, I, I guess it was the fear factor. I did this, and this was going back about five, six years ago. So still relatively new, but mm. think of what's happened in the world of social media in the last five years. It's very it's, different. It's, it's very different now. But back five years ago, people were still, you know, you know, poking around at the edges and not really fully embracing it. And, mm -hmm. and the main reason for that, and it's, um, and I and I make sure I'm aware of this when I'm presenting and, and doing my own speaking skills. One of the things I say is I want to take away the fear factor. Um, you know, I'm 50 years of age, so I haven't grown up with these platforms and, and it's the fear factor generally that people go, oh, I don't want to learn it, I don't know how to do it. And, <laughs> and you just forget it and you stick with your own way. So mm. um, that was the main reason why it was, I, 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 and I hadn't had anyone really show me and didn't really feel a need for it. And the fear factor was keeping me from learning myself. Yeah. How, how long was it before you started to get a little bit of momentum? Uh, well, look, I I, um, I tra started to transition out of my sales corporate career and I, I jumped into the world of um, sales coaching because I came from that background and um, and I had a few corporate clients, a couple in the motor industry and a couple of in B2B sales. And I remember uh, one of them said, oh, Mark, you're on LinkedIn. Can you come back next week and train my sales team on LinkedIn? And I went like a good uh, business person. I crossed my fingers behind my back and said, absolutely, I can come back and teach you on LinkedIn. I'll work it out in a week. <laughs> so basically, it forced me to work it out within a week. And that's where I had that aha moment where I went, oh, my God, this is amazingly powerful. Mm. So my, my transition from sales corporate career into my own sales training business, within six months, I, I realized social media is the future. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, and I'll never forget that. It was like I, I was forced to learn it and that's where I had these light bulbs going off everywhere, going amazingly powerful. What was it that was, was the epiphany for you? Was it the, the number, the sheer number of inbound leads you were getting or was it the sales that you were closing or what, what was it in particular that kind of, you just made you go, wow, this is great? Well, it was before all of that and it's my favorite way to describe LinkedIn and I described, I mentioned it before and I know that will say it again today and it, it's not by accident that I repeat this, it's for em emphasis, invisible, becomes visible. Mm. You can literally use LinkedIn, the giant database and search engine that it is, and you can go Office Manager Sydney, and it will bring up 5,285 people yeah. in my network whose current job title is Office Manager Sydney. Mm. Now, these are people that I, in all likelihood, would, would never have known existed. I would never have had the opportunity to 
see their face, see their name, where they work, mm -hmm. without literally making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cold calls over and over and over again. So that one example, Office Managers Sydney, is just one example. You could take any city in, in, in around the world, San Diego accounting firms, invisible becomes visible and you're halfway down the process of um, reaching out to these people by a few people clicks. So that was the epiphany moment, that was the aha moment, realising it's that simple. And yeah. if you're listening into this podcast and you're not a big user, and sometimes people are just not fans of LinkedIn for whatever reason, I guess because it's kind of business related, it's not fun like Facebook and Instagram yeah. or YouTube or something like that, and I get it, but you know, maybe I can share a little bit of my experience with my podcast booking agency. In the last couple of months, I, I've I have people that want to come on this show and I have people that want to go on other people's shows. So I've got a large network of podcasters, around two and a half thousand podcasters in my network that I'm connected to. So someone comes to me and says, hey, Rob, can I can I get on your show? Sure, they come on my show. And can you get me on some more? Yeah, sure. So I need to go and find people that want that type of PR and I need to find podcasters as well. And at first, when I, when I first started this business, it was a bit of a happy accident, actually, because the way that I, I grew my audience with this podcast was just by going on other people's shows. And I went on lots and lots and lots of shows, all sorts of things, all sorts of weird and obscure stuff that you would never think that the go all in guy, Rob, would go and talk about. But I did because it was practicing, it was refining my skill set. And over time, I had a lot of people say to me, hey, Rob, can you do the same thing for me? And I was like, no, 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 do it yourself, go. It's, it was such hard work to actually make it go and happen. And eventually I capitulated and, and people came to me and I said, all right, let's get you booked on some shows. And that's sort of the evolution of the agency side of my business and how it worked. And it works really, really well. But you, you kind of, you lose momentum with the people that you know from a networking perspective. There's only so many people in my immediate network that want that type of PR, that are looking to do that type of thing. So the natural thing for me, of course, is to go to LinkedIn and to do that. And you know, when you look at the sales navigator, it's so easy to target people. And the type of PR that podcasting is, it's kind of creating and doctoring your own uh, PR, if you like. And you've got a message to share, you've got a product to sell, you've got something that you wanna communicate, you wanna get across there. Who are the people that wanna do that? Well, that's entrepreneurs, that's speakers, and that's authors. So I go into the platform, look for entrepreneurs, speakers, and authors. I refine the search down, and with the sales navigator, sending a 150, 200 connection requests per day. And I'm having a strike rate of about 60% of people adding me back. So every time they add me back, I send them another message saying, hey, you know, we've got a large network of podcasters looking for people just like you. Is that something that you're interested in? And we turn that on, and the conversion that we have there is exceptional. Mm. It's exceptional. And it's because... Even though it's a bit of a shotgun approach with those customer avatars, there's just so many people like that on the planet. And if you ask 10 of them, three of them will say yes. And you don't have to send 200 or 150 connection requests per day and, and have the, the kind of the metrics that I've got. It's a bit clickbaity. It's not spammy, it's a bit clickbaity. But you know, like, hey, you know, great profile. With, how would you like to be interviewed on a podcast? I've got a large network of podcasters looking for people like you. And people are like, they must be with their finger on the trigger like, is this guy gonna try and sell me something the minute I say yes? And the short answer is yes, but it takes us a couple of steps to get there and we ask them permission to do that. And my gosh, you know, if I sit in this little studio in this little office where we are right here at that desk over there and, and pump in, I don't know, 10 new sales per day like that. It's incredible. And it's just, it's a true it's a true laptop business, it's a true global business, and all because of LinkedIn, right? Absolutely, and it's, it's and I mentioned earlier, I get, I get find all, or found all the time, and um, one of my most recent um, clients that I was able to work, uh, Tom Davis out of St. Louis, Missouri, he found me online via LinkedIn, we connected, we sent some messages through, and we were able to do some um, online, or I was able to do some online coaching for him, um, I think it was at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning um, Sydney, Sydney time, time yeah. which was fine because I'm an early riser anyway, but it suited him. S already sent me a wonderful testimonial. Uh, I was able to show him in a, in a relatively short period of time some things that he just wasn't aware of. And Tom was a, a pretty good, um, he's come from the medical profession and you know, a pretty switched on guy. Um, but he just, I suppose, needed that last little, you know, a few little nuggets. Um, and one of the most favourite things I like saying and or asking my clients or potential clients is what's one new customer or client worth to you? Mm. You know, and quite often they'll say, oh, $500 or $1,000 or a repeat customer can be, 
you know, worth many, many thousands of dollars. And that leads me into then saying, well, look, I can help you generate, you know, hundreds or even thousands at of those scale. opportunities yeah. at scale. So they then have a bit of an aha moment where they go, look, yeah, I need to engage and work with Mark because Mark, a small investment working with Mark mm. will then pay off 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. So mm. LinkedIn's brilliant. Um, so the tip is start using a LinkedIn <laughs> and you will generate more leads Absolutely. and you will grow your business or brand. I, I would add to that and say that if you're going to do that, you really have to kind of go back to the basics of your targeting and know exactly who you're selling to, knowing exactly who your customer avatar is because they reside there. And you just got to be really refined. You know, is, is it a, a male or a female between, you know, this income bracket and that income bracket and what location are they in? What profession are they in? If you could define those things and take the time to go all the way back to the basics of, who are you selling to then it's the most efficient platform in the world that you can do at scale as well and yeah i can't say enough about it myself it's just really really good what about when you see in your linkedin timeline i know a lot of people get annoyed at linkedin in there and and i guess because it's not fun you know there's every time you go in there there's someone there with a selfie video promoting themselves talking about themselves and you know putting good vibes out in the world what, what would you say to that LinkedIn's evolved over the last five years or so. Microsoft bought them um, probably two, three years ago, 26 billion US dollars. So Microsoft wanted to get into the world of social media, invested a lot of money. Um, so the platform has evolved away from very, very corporate, you know, suit and tie, mm. um, big city office type of people, which I think is good though, um, because before we're any of our jobs title, we're human beings. And, and you don't have to be wearing a suit working in the big city. You could be, you know, someone like Rob, who's, you know, international podcaster running the business from his home office. Mm. And that's just as entitled to be on LinkedIn as someone wearing a suit and tie. So, but you are right. It's, a, it's, um, it's loosened up a bit. Um, I'm a fan of it though. But I suppose I'm a little bit biased because I'm in the world of social media and I, and I, and I spread myself across Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and they are very much, you know, more relaxed platforms, but I think it's good. And, and quite often I do see on, on LinkedIn where maybe a female fashion brand is utilizing the platform to promote um, their product and their services. And sometimes the comments come through aren't very um, complimentary. And I think that's very unfair because a female who, and generally a female, or a female who has a, a fashion business online is quite entitled to promote that via LinkedIn. It's just, I suppose, probably men my age who aren't utilize, who are used to seeing that type of come through on their newsfeed. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a reflection on the people who, who maybe aren't necessarily, it's their, it's their, it's their issue. Um, I think it's, I think it's, it, whatever your business or brand, if your target market is going to be on LinkedIn, um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. And if that means then you, uh, offend a few people, well, maybe not offend, if you sort of, um, you know, get a few noses out of joint, then then that's okay, you know, you, you've got to stick your head up in the online world these days. Mm -hmm. If you, if, you know, the squeaky wheel gets noticed, if you if you want to fly under the radar, then you'll fly under the radar and you probably won't be too successful. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and you know, I, I think it's about, that you can be one of three things online is, is what I think, and, and, and never, never more true than in the LinkedIn platform. You can be entertaining, mm -hmm. but, if you think of entertainment, what do you do for entertainment? When you're sitting down to watch something, you turn on Netflix or you turn on some sport. I don't want to be entertained by an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurs are not entertaining. So you're either entertaining, informative or annoying. And I think there's a very fine line between being informative and being annoying. And I think that's got to do with your delivery. Yes. Be able to find your voice and understand exactly what it is that you do. I know that sometimes when I record a, a video I, and look back at it, I think that's just annoying. Don't don't put that out there. And do you? Or do you just... No, I don't. No, no, you don't? No, because I'm, I'm my harshest critic. And, and you know, I, I sort of think, well, it's not really informative. It's just kind of, it's me making a point having a little rant about something. And sometimes, a that, yeah, sometimes they're okay because that can just be part of your branding. Yeah. Um, you know, it's branding, you know, and, and the two of the three words you, you just used then, informative and entertaining, and what's the last one? Annoying. Annoying. <laughs> um, at the sign off of all of my video content now, I say, you know, generally sign off, hey there, and if you found this informative, entertaining, or helpful, mm -hmm. hit the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. So informative, entertaining, or helpful, try and, and keep people engaged because with yep. video, 
a third of people will click off within the first 10 seconds and mm. more than half will be gone within the first minute. So you need to be entertaining. Mm. You need to hit them there and or, or, or have that hook for them to, to um to stay yeah. because our trigger fingers now have never been more primed <laughs> uh, or stop the scroll as I say. We need to stop the scroll and um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but look, I, I, I honestly believe social media, they're your platforms, they're your mini websites as I call them. Mm. How you use it is up to you. Mm. I honestly believe um, I can give someone a hammer and they can build a house or they can break a window. Mm. I can give someone teach on the, the, the social media platforms, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, how they then want to use those platforms um, is really up to them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. I think part of the reason people get a bit annoyed with LinkedIn is because it's not Facebook and you're used to that. It's not Instagram and you're used to that. That's that's just what it is, right? And I saw, uh, I, was, I was looking through my feed and there was a comment in one of the Mark Boris groups yes. and the, the woman was like, oh my God, Mark, what do you say about all of these people and their selfie videos? And, and I thought, yeah, what do you say? What, what is he gonna say about that? And, and he was like, well, just cause you're having a rotten day, it doesn't mean that they are. They're out there putting good vibes in the world, doing things and they're making their way in the world and you should do that as well. Maybe if you stop and, and listen to what they say, they're inside of your network after all, that's why you're seeing them in your newsfeed. Why don't you stop and have a little look? And I was like, yeah, maybe I should get my ego out of the way and take a leaf out of Mark's book. He's quite right. And if it is annoying me, don't let it annoy me. Just just keep scrolling past it and keep going like that. And so it was a little bit of a turning point for me when I read that. Just it was probably about a year ago. And then people on LinkedIn stopped annoying me so much. It was, uh, <laughs> and, and that was all me, right? That's all me. And it's exactly what you said to your point where you know they're your platforms. You can use it how you want. And you'll make it. You'll make what you want of it like that and if it's annoying to you it'll be annoying and if it's not it's not it's as simple as that yes and then the online world if you don't want to if um, don't go anywhere online if you if you're if you're easily offended or easily yes. annoyed because <laughs> it'll only take seconds before something will scroll through it'll be the image it'll be a headline <laughs> it'll be a statement it'll be a story um, but the world is now at our fingertip and i actually spoke at a, a presentation the other day and um and part of it was Sydney used to have four daily newspapers, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Yep. We now only have the two daily newspapers, but our, our mobile phones um, now give us everything the world has to offer. Yep. Um, so we're so much more informed, but um, we, I think in some ways we're potentially um, e more easily offended as well. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, li LinkedIn is, is a bit of the ugly duckling of social media, yes. if you like. That's, yes. that's how I call it. But I think it's the next big thing. And um, if you look at the people that are, are talking about social media and the people that are at the forefront of that, they talk about LinkedIn and TikTok as the two next big sort of things. And you've got a large following, as I mentioned on LinkedIn. And one of the things you can't do there at the moment, but they're implementing is go live in there. Go live in Facebook, you go live in YouTube, of course, and go live in Instagram. But in LinkedIn, that's coming, isn't it? So that's gonna be a big thing. Well, it's it's slowly being rolled out and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it to appear in my newsfeed. And I probably, um, I've got a large network, so I, I, I have a, lots of connections and I, I probably see every, uh, a couple of times a week now, someone who's doing live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as we said at the start, video content, you will get vastly more engagement on any video content, no matter what platform you put it on, even on your website. So uh, not learning video or, or putting your, you know, um, burying your head in the sand is a sure fire way to, you know, really miss the boat. But yeah, LinkedIn and now it is exciting, live video. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and they're, they're slowly re um, bringing it out, but I, I don't know. I don't know anyone yet who's got it or has the availability of it. But as soon as I have it, watch out. Those annoying <laughs> videos will be coming from me. But this is where the opportunity is. You can then start doing one-minute, short, sharp, one-minute video updates, which I now do as well. Um, but you can now start doing them as a live event, mm. um, and it's you know a tip for the day or a, a positive thought or a positive message. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well well said. I applied for the live because you have to apply for it via LinkedIn and they said, it's no, we're not taking any more applications. It's, it's rolling out pretty soon yeah. like that. We're, we're talking about video here, Mark, but I wanted to ask a couple of questions. It's all right for me and you because we get on camera all the time yes. and we're comfortable. And um, by the way, that's not always how it was. Oh, um, absolutely. It, it was always very awkward and clunky. And even now it's still awkward and clunky and you, you're fiddling with gear and you're getting frustrated and it takes you five takes to get something right and you know it's just not easy to do but 
for the people that are out there listening and, and hearing us talk about 80% of the internet being video, and if you're in a sales or a BDM role of any sort, then you need to be on camera. Not everybody is comfortable on camera. I know that as soon as I, as soon as I put my, my proper SLR cameras and get all my proper photography equipment out and start doing that, people get, oh, they're like, oh. Oh, and if I, if I set all the gear up properly here in the studio and somebody rocks in here to actually be on camera properly, not just with a video with my mobile phone. Sorry, I didn't do it today because I kind of didn't have good. all the gear with me. That's why I was going it. to mention that just today. There's no necessarily high tech. We have a good yeah. microphone because yeah. the sound is key. But yeah, we're just using um, a mobile phone on, 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 on a small tripod and that's how simple it is to be. Very, very simple. But, you know, it can be as simple as that with a phone, the tripod, the light and... Uh, and some mics, and we've got the, the camera plugged into the microphones here just next to us, so we're getting proper sound to the phone as well. But people are like, I feel so silly when I get in front of the camera. How can, have you got something that you can, maybe some, uh, let me fire a couple of questions at you, Absolutely. And, and maybe you can give me some quick fire responses back. So, Mark, I feel, I, I feel silly when I get in front of the camera. I look like a goose. I understand how you feel because 99% of the market feels exactly the same way. If you're wanting to grow your business or brand or launch a business, get over it because video is the future. I, I, is that what I really sound like? Uh, yes, you do. But see, we're all we're all we're we're harsher we're, we're harder on ourselves than 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 what um, you know, other people are because we're not used to seeing ourselves on camera. Um, you know, our friends don't necessarily our friends see us differently to how we see each other. So yes, that's how we do sound on camera. But when most of us are getting the first opportunity to actually view that back, so um, but that'll pass. That'll pass. I, I look. Insert your choice. Insert your choice, listener slash viewer. I look old, fat, slow, ugly, terrible. Yes, we all do. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but guess what? So does the rest of the world. So um, one thing that I, I one thing that. Well, my biggest tip for video content is be yourself. We're now living in a world where simple, short, sharp videos recorded on mobile phones with or without lighting, with or without good sound are the norm. Mm. So the corporate anchor videos that were, that I and that's my, my way that I call them, professionally done corporate anchor don't need to be done anymore. Mm. Um, yes, there are certain industries, you know, the very you know big end of town, financial, legal, awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I said to a d divorce lawyer, a friend of mine who was wanting to get some video content, I say, be relatable. You're mm. going to get clients who are coming through your, your, your office. They don't want to see you looking like um, a lawyer. They want to see you looking relatable that they can, you know, go and, you know, cry in front of and, and everything yeah. else that goes through getting divorced. So you don't need to be, it, it doesn't need to be overly scripted or staged. In fact, if it is overly scripted or staged, people will go, but too boring, I can't relate to that. They'll continue with the scroll. Correct, they will, so you've got to stop the scroll and the scroll happens within, I should have my phone here, so yeah. I turn my phone off and put it down. The scroll literally happens within half a second and yep. unless you engage that person within the first three to five seconds, they're gone. Mm, and, and you know, there's a couple of things that I would say, and maybe that I can share as well, because yep. I've spent a lot of time on camera in the last couple of months, just growing this business and doing more video. And over the last year or so with this podcast, I've realised I've built a, a reasonable audience in social media, but I'm going to focus my attention on YouTube because people don't listen to a podcast in Facebook or in Twitter, even though the player isn't there, you can play it, you can close the app, and it's still playing. They're not listening there; they're looking there for entertainment and. What the analytics tell me is that they listen for probably about 10 minutes at most and then they're scrolling away and I've lost them. But when I look at the analytics of a video like this that we're shooting here now on YouTube, people stay till 85 to 90% of it. They stay right to the very end of it because they're drawn into it at the start because you're sitting down at YouTube to watch the video and to consume the video. And there's the visual aspect of it as well, whereas in a podcast traditionally, it's just the, um, the audio, mm. um, whereas in YouTube, there's the, the visual aspect as well. And... Um, so yeah, yeah, when I'm recording, I, I'm, I'm lucky because all I do is produce content. It's really cool. And I get to produce it in three different ways, in video, audio, and in written content because I have transcriptions and I write blog posts in and around, 
about the interviews that I do. So all I do is produce content, which is really kind of cool in a business like that because it drives a lot of traffic, it drives a lot of engagement like that as well, which I like a lot. But one of the things that I learned to do in the last couple of months was sometimes I have these thought bubbles that come into my mind when I'm when I'm out here and at the Cronulla Sand Dunes at like five o'clock in the morning and there's nobody around and I'm listening to a Jocko podcast in my ears, you know, something about leadership on the battlefield or whatever he's talking about. And I have a thought bubble and I'm like, I've got, to, I've got to write something about that. I've got to do something about that. And I want to translate that from the written word or the blog post I'm going to write and put that into a video. So one tip that I could share with the audience is I like to, I like to write to speak, to, trans, to, to do that, because it's a real creative outlet for me. And I love the process of doing that. And one thing that I use is an app called Oratory. Do you, have you heard of that? I haven't heard of it, but there are things that are being invented today that we haven't heard of. Yeah, but yeah. there's another one. And, um, yeah. There's one. Have you got an Android phone or an iPhone? I've got an iPhone. You're an iPhone. So there's other apps out there. And, and Oratory, what it is, it's, it's a tel- teleprompter app. Okay. But, but it's not a teleprompter app in the same way that you would think you go in. So what it is, it's an applet. You open the app, you put your text in there, you paste your text into it, and you open it. Then you open your camera, and then it sits on top of the camera. So you can use any app that you've got on your camera because the cameras on phones these days are really very good. So I use a, a, another app called FilmMic Pro, which lets you have all the manual settings on your phone to control your camera, the lighting and all those sorts of things, which is great. And then I put oratory over the top of it, face the camera to myself, and I can read it like I'm a journalist. Yeah. And I practice that skill and that skill has become really refined over the last couple of, well, probably the last 12 months, I suppose. I got really, really good at that. And I'm really critical of news readers I sit and watch on TV. I'm like, oh, come on, man. You know, you're making mistakes there reading from a teleprompter. You're supposed to be a professional. You're yeah. on TV. And, but, you know, people that are not comfortable on camera and that are worried about the way that they look and the way that they sound and the way that they feel when they're in front of it, I think one really great tip to get you over all of that is to use a teleprompter. Absolutely, and, and I agree with it. And then, because otherwise there's lots of ums and ahs and things like that. I haven't gone down that path yet, only because I, I probably a little bit, um, you know, more experienced with teaching, uh, speaking and off the cuff. And, and I just prefer a more natural um, way because sometimes for the, and, and um, Robert was correct in what he said, um, for the inexperienced people, when you can literally, even though they're looking directly at the phone, you can tell they're reading mm. and you sort of lose that. It's like you're looking like the, the what night, happened there? You're looking like the nightly um, uh, news person. And it's okay to be recording and having a conversation like this. And I'm now looking directly at the camera and it's okay to have the odd ums and ahs because this is live video. This is normal video. This is what people would rather you know, that's what they um, consume. consume. That's what they use to consume. If it's overly scripted or overly formal, um, I find um, people will click off and go, oh, "No, it's it's now like I'm watching the news." Mm. But for a beginner who is less able to to talk and speak and present and, and continue it, it is a really good um, way to do because you can write specific scripts down, appear on the app. And then you can just you know do them one minute, two minute at a time, and mm. piece them all together, and you have a 10, 20 minute video. What I discovered was it, it really forced me to focus on what it was that I was saying and how I communicate. You know, what do they say? It's eighty or ninety percent of communication is body language. And when you're standing in front of a camera and you're talking and you're using your hands and your facial expressions and all of those sorts of things, when you're reading from something, all of that body language kind of goes away because I'm reading something. And even if the camera is two, three, four meters away from me and I can still read the teleprompter and I can see what's going on there, my body language is different to what it would otherwise be if I was just ad-libbing, something like that. So I discovered that when I was doing that, when I was wanting to have like a, and I wanted to hit those key points, but I wanted to emphasize those key points, I, I found the process of writing that and writing it to be spoken really creative and I fell in love with doing that and I fell in love with video as a result of it. And I've never had a problem public speaking or instructing because I've got a military background so that's never been an issue for you. They put you there and tell you to do it and you do it until you get good at it. And I got good at it, but then as soon as you do it with a camera and you're doing it by yourself and there's, you're outside here in Cronulla and there's other people around watching you, I can do it anywhere now. So I'm so comfortable with my own voice. I'm so comfortable in my own delivery and I actually really, really enjoy it because I fell in love with the process of oh my God, Jocko said that, or, or I listened to this on this podcast and I'm going to write about that. And the creativity of it 
turned into something that was like really super fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a nice way to get over your nerves and to get over the fact that, oh my God, I've got to be on video. I have to do this, I have to do that. Everybody else is doing it. I've got to get on the gravy train. Mm -hmm. If you can make it a little bit fun. It is absolutely fun. And you are right, increasingly people are doing it, but the vast, vast majority of business owners or brands or people connecting, uh, people in, um, that you're competing with, won't actually do it. And, and my tip is just record a one minute video explaining to get going, a one to two minute video on who you are, what you do and how you help. And then that is it. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, do the same thing, but only a bit, little bit better. And then the next day, the same thing, but only a little bit better. And you will look back and I guarantee you, if you do this for a whole month, for 30 videos, who you are, what you do, how you help, change it slightly each time, mm -hmm. you will be, you will be ahead of 99% of the people in business because firstly, you've done 30 videos. Yeah. Um, and then th secondly, you're, you're just becoming more comfortable, more natural. You might even find utilizing the teleprompter, you don't need it anymore because you, you have the content, you know what you're gonna speak with um, within your mind and it is okay to have a bit of a pause. It's okay to be natural, um, but yeah. I, I agree with it. Just, just, just start going with it. Mm. Um, and the person who can master video content and distribute it across as many different platforms will rule the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, in a in a good way. I in mean. a good way. In a good way. Yes. In a good way. You know, I, I think there's there's never been a more important time in history than to master the skill, and that's because it's the new norm, and your customers and consumers expect to see that. And you know, I think if you've got your own YouTube channel and you don't need to be these like YouTubers, you don't have to be anything special or fancy, you're not trying to compete with those, but if you're in business, in a business development or a sales role, you must absolutely have a YouTube channel because it positions you as an authority. Now, work with me here and, and, and this is, you know, this is the same thing for podcasting and with a podcast booking agency that I have, people come to me and you know they've got half a dozen podcasts under their belt and they're like paying for it still and they're like, what's next? Well, let's think about how we can position yourself and better use these things to make you look like an authority. So if you're recording videos and you're recording 30 videos in 30 days about 30 different topics, for example, if a consumer comes to you, a prospect comes to you and asks you a question about something, instead of answering the email in text or answering them the way you normally would, why not point them to the video, to the timestamp in that part of the video that explains it? And if you're on an interview like this, it increases your status and your credibility because it's like, well, Mark's on an interview with, who's that guy? Some, what's that gal in thing? What's that? So it looks like you're somebody talking about something and it increases your status. And, and I, I sort of think that in a commoditized world, if you can position yourself as an authority and you're seen as the authority by the prospects and the consumers that are looking to purchase from you, that goes as the foundation piece of the decision-making matrix that a buyer goes through. Because if they find you and see you there as the authority, they're gonna start thinking, well, you know, that person is on that podcast, on that video, they've got these videos, they're always constantly out there talking about it. They look like they can handle my stuff. That's what they look like. They look like they can handle my stuff. And if they go and shop you, and shop you round, and your competitors are not doing it, guess where they're coming back? Absolutely, and, and you, we see that in, in the old fashioned media, um, being the nightly news. The nightly news in probably every city around the world has their go-to experts that they wheel in when there's a particular um, topic. Mm. Um, it'll be expert, you know, Robert Bruce expert in this, or Mark Wonkin, mm. you know, he, aviation expert or, or whatever. So the the media, the um, you know, businesses are looking for experts and the world of social media is where they find them. And, and video content is um, increasingly, again, where a decision will be made. They will like the look, they will like the sound, they will say, hey, this is someone, yeah, that we would like to um, to do some work with. So as you're listening into this podcast or you're watching this video, you'll be going, all right, guys, that sounds that sounds really good. Sounds really good. But Mark, I'm going to I'm gonna fire a couple of objections okay. at you like that because you're a sales guy and you're yes. good at handling <laughs> objections. Right, right. And, and I'm going to be the, the, the whinging person that took the advice of, of Rob and Mark and I'm going to do the videos. I've got a dozen videos up online and the first thing that comes out of my mouth is I go, it's not working. That's right, but, but, but keep but keep going. 
<laughs> that's it. Well, that's right. Look, initially it won't be working because um, I know in my YouTube channel it was, you know, it was just not growing at all. Yeah. But I did two things recently. Uh, I started recording more video and started sharing those video content on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and my YouTube channel doubled in regard to the number of subscribers mm -hmm. within a, uh, within six weeks. Quickly, quickly. So it's yeah, of course it's not working because um, if you've only got a, a couple of videos and they're out on your website or. On, on a small LinkedIn, um, oh sorry, or you're putting them on your Facebook page with only 35 people who've liked your Facebook page, or of course it's not going to work because there's not enough reach. But there is so much that you can do online these days. You can share that one video, you can literally share that one video content mm -hmm. across hundreds and hundreds of places online, groups, forums, you know, blog posts, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever, it is endless. Um, but sometimes people just don't know how to do that. So it's normally a combination of why it's not working. Oh, I still feel so awkward doing this. I look terrible. I sound terrible. Of Even though I've been doing it for 20 videos. Of course you feel awkward. Of course you sound terrible. But yeah, you, you're, you're your own harsher critic. But it's only 20 videos. I guarantee you after 200 you will be looking back at your video number seven, eight, nine, and 10, and you'll be going, oh my God, look at, her, look at me. And you'll laugh at yourself because you will realize that you've evolved. There's a great saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Mm. How do you lose 20 kilos or 50 pounds, whatever, one kilo, one pound at a time. And you'll look back at that and go, wow, it wasn't that hard in the end. But yeah, it's hard at the time. It is, absolutely. But that will it pass. Is. I guarantee you that that will pass. And, and don't and don't pull those ones down because they're fun and people like to see that. Your customers like to see absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I did make that mistake. I pulled down most of my YouTubes and I, I ended up, I think it was a Gary um, V video. He said, no, no, no. It's credibility. It shows you where you were to where you are now. Growth. Um, some of them were cringeworthy, um, but I have kept a couple because they're, um, <laughs> they're me, but from where I'm at now, they, um, you know, I look back and go, wow. Yep, yep. yep. it's good progression. Here's the, here's the last common, uh, common complaint that I, I do know and I hear it often as well, is like, Mark, I'm doing all this work, I'm doing everything you're saying, but gosh, no one's watching. And that's right, um, because, well, sometimes, and, Maybe, well firstly, it's, it's, there's, there's a few aspects to, to video that, that are essential. Um, firstly, if you're putting it on YouTube or Facebook, it's the thumbnail. It's the thumbnail before the title, before your video gets watched. So mm -hmm. people will say to me, Mark, my videos aren't get, getting watched. I have a look at the thumbnail and the thumbnail is not intriguing. It's not stopping the scroll. Mm -hmm. We will literally scroll through within a millisecond. So the thumbnail is the most important part of your video. Mm -hmm because your video won't get watched unless your thumbnail is eye-catching. So I pay to get all of my video thumbnails professionally done. Mm -hmm. So once the thumbnail is seen though, it's then the title. That all happens within a millisecond. The thumbnail, the title, and then someone's going to decide whether they click to read on or watch within seconds. So engaging, eye-catching um, thumbnails, but then intriguing headlines, mm. how to, how to, um, how to lose 20 kilos in, in, in four weeks without having to go to the gym. Yep. A how to, 20 kilos within four weeks without. And it's those type of combinations. And, and these are things that I've learned and these are things that anyone can learn. Mm -hmm. But that's generally the reason. The main reason is the video is not getting clicked. That's why it's not getting watched. Simple as that, really. <laughs> but then once the video gets clicked, you need to engage people within the first five to 10 seconds because a third of people will click off. So there is... There are many things, and I, on my YouTube channel, I have some of those videos that teach people exactly that. And if you're looking for an easy way to create really engaging thumbnails, there's a couple of bits of software out there that do it. Most people know Canva. Canva, Canva can help you do that pretty easily as well if you're not familiar with Photoshop or something like that. And another piece of software out there you might not have heard of is called Thumbnail Blaster. There you go. They've got a great bit of software that um, creates some really engaging things there as well. So. I want to move on from the video and talk about something that goes hand in hand with video. So I'm not talking about the semantics of it like we just were, but how how that in, how that integrates as part of personal branding. So for me, I've done a couple of podcasts in the last few months in and around personal branding and authority positioning and I really believe that you can't have one of those two things without the other. You can't be seen as an authority in a space or a thought leader in a space without having 
a, a really strong personal brand. And you don't need to be an entrepreneur. You don't need to be a business owner. You can be an employee to have a personal brand as well. And I really believe that your personal brand has got a lot to do with what you stand for, what you believe in and how you conduct yourself and how you carry out business and how you help people in your day-to-day -day activities, whether you're a business owner, an entrepreneur or an employee, it doesn't matter. But talk to me, Mark, about how to use video to help you with your personal branding. Um, I suppose, one of the things that is try and create a unique look so um or a familiar look it doesn't have to be unique a familiar is a better word a familiar look and sound to all of your videos um because then when people are seeing the snippet of it they go oh hang on that's one of mark's videos or that's one of robert's i recognize the set or i recognize um you know the backdrop or i recognize the thumbnail mm. and we talked about thumbnails before try and get a uniformity to the looking of all of your thumbnails um, but yeah, you want to, yeah, people will then start to recognize you. And we do that with, um, you know, all of the major brands there. You, you can you can see something on television and sometimes you'll go, I bet you that's a commercial for, you just get the feel of, of it because it has that familiarity. But yeah, everything that you do, the colors, um, the look, um, everything you do should always be in alignment with your personal branding. Now that doesn't mean you can change can't change from that slightly. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often it's good to have a behind the scenes. Yep, absolutely. Look. Yep. Because firstly, we're humans and people want to deal with people. Yep. Um, so, you know, by going off off um, you know, off point every now and then to show people the human aspect of you is okay. But yeah, um, consistency in the in the way you do things. And I'm guessing this is a familiar set that you use here. It is, yeah, yeah. It, it is yeah. absolutely. And, and people often ask me, you know, what are the pictures yeah. that are behind you all the time? And uh, a lot of these people are aviators and you know, aviation's a deep passion of mine. Yeah. And uh, these are the, uh, the folks that have gone all in. You know, there's Yuri Gagarin, you know, Smithy and Charles Ohm yeah. there as well. Chuck Yeager, the first guy to break the sound barrier. These are guys that, are, that went all in in mm -hmm. aviation. And that's something that's just been part of my life for a yep. long time, reading those books and, you know, watching those documentaries as a young fellow mm -hmm. as well. And that, you know, whenever I'm recording a podcast at my desk over there, that's the backdrop to it. That's something that's familiar there yep. all the time. And I think I'd add to what you've got there with the familiar familiarity is got to do with the format mm -hmm. of what you deliver. If you deliver it in the same way every time, but then you deviate every now and then just to mix it up, of course. And I like to do that with the podcasting thing, talking about uh, what's coming up. But if I do a Facebook Live, you know, for the podcast, I talk about um, who's who's the next guest. I don't do this as often as I yeah. should, but I've got a remit for myself and something to do over there. Uh, what's coming up, what I just did, and what you missed out on. So make sure you go and get that. And then talking about something else in between. So if I do that three times a week, because I'm recording three or four times a week like that, that gives me heaps of content to talk about. But in between, in the, in the off days, I talk about things that are interesting to me, about leadership, about military leadership, about those types of things that are kind of the interstitial things that I do in between the podcasting. So that kind of, oh, there's that Rob guy again, he's talking about the same thing. He's, he's talking about leadership again. He's talking about that again. Oh, he's got that analogy this time. It's the same sorts of things every time, even though the location might be slightly different, same format. And that's what people are consuming your product for. They're not coming here for a cooking channel as such, yep. or they're not necessarily coming for fashion. They're coming for you know that particular um, niche or that particular... Um, yeah, yeah, the topic topic that that you know they want to consume, and we're all allowed to consume different range, of, um, different styles of topics, and we all consume them at different times. You know, in the car, quite often I'm listening to business stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but at home of an evening I maybe want something that's um, more entertaining. And my son's got me on well on YouTube, but um, more the universe and stars. And with the moon, with the fiftieth anniversary of the moon, my, yep. my my YouTube feed now is full of all of this. Uh, um, you know, planets in the solar system feed at the moment. So yeah, we consume different things at different times. I, I'm always uh, I'm always humbled when I look at somebody else's feed. Yes. Every now and then, you know, my missus asked me to do something for her on a phone, and I get a phone. And I'm looking through a Facebook feed, and her feed is is like totally different to mine. Or look at her Instagram feed; it's different again. Look at her YouTube, and like, what, what are you watching? There's, there's a tip for on the Facebook and YouTube and Instagram will continually give you more of the same things that yep. you are looking for. So at the moment, my YouTube channel is full of lots of, uh, as I said, aviation or um, you know. Uh, astronaut space, space stuff, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so be careful what you scroll for because you'll get more and more of that yeah yeah it's the algo doing it for you yes it is nice nice well mark thank you so much for sharing your insights there and, and sharing all that that's very very valuable i'm going to put you in some uh typical podcasting questions here that i love love to ask 
Is there a drum roll? Here's the drum roll. Well, I don't have the sound effect on my, on my board here. There we go. But here we go. It is, Mark, if I, I met you 18 months ago, how would you be different than you are today? I'm now a YouTube expert, and it's it's my most exciting time of my my, my life and my business and because I see the power. It's, I've had those aha moments. YouTube has been hard to learn, let me tell you, mm. as a tip. It's not easy. It's not as easy as Facebook. But the fact that I've pushed through and pushed through and I've understand everything, I've, I've really created um, myself into a, a YouTube expert and comfortable with video content. Um, 30 or 40 videos now online, one a week. I look back and go, wow, I'm really proud of what I've done for myself. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. And, and where's it going to take you in the next 12 months? Uh, well, it's, it's, it takes me all around the world. I, I had an online um, client recently from St. Louis. I was contacted just the other day from a financial institution here in Sydney. Um, they're wanting a LinkedIn expert, but they liked my YouTube videos. Um, the person that was engaging said, hey, Mark, I see you're a LinkedIn expert, but we like your style on LinkedIn. We think you're relatable. Mm -hmm. um, Very nice. So it will literally, it, it will take me in directions that I don't even know exist yet. Well, that's exciting. Absolutely. Very. It'd be fearful for some, but no, fortune favors the brave. Nice, nice. Well said, well said. All right, let's put you in the hot seat for the last couple of questions here for right. the podcast. Do you have a favorite author, mate? Oh, favorite author. <laughs> uh, questions like that. Uh, I don't read much. I, I consume lots, but I don't read much. Um, favorite author. Um, let me think, let me think. Um, well, look, when I, when I did, going back years ago, um, Jeffrey Archer, there you go. I liked his stuff, but I, I, I don't have time to read many books. But I suppose in a modern way of saying, who's your favorite author? I love the Gary Vaynerchuk stuff. There we go. Yep. Favorite author, but it's in video format. Yeah. Uh, Russell Brunson, a lot of the online social media, that's a bit my, yeah, that's that's my world at the moment, so. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I, I, uh, my favorite author has to be, when people ask me that question, I, I would say Grant Cardone, because mm -hmm. sales has been such a big thing for me. And uh, mm -hmm. guess who's coming on the Go All In podcast? Oh, well, there you go, fantastic. And I've only become a recent I now know who he is. Yeah. Um, what's his tagline? Um, be obsessed or be average. Tennis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah Grant Cardone, look, check him out. He's very, very good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Uncle GC is going to be on the Golan podcast at the end of this month. So uh, very excited mm -hmm. by that. One of one of the very biggest influences in yeah, my life. In fact, one of the big, an influence of the Golan podcast and the yeah. idea of starting that. So looking forward to meeting the guy uh, face to face. It's going to be kind of cool. Excellent. Excellent. Favorite holiday destination? Uh, well, I'll say the Gold Coast with my son because we can go to all the theme parks. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was going somewhere again, I would go to Las Vegas. I loved it. You love Vegas? I just and not. <laughs> I just loved walking up and down the strip. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah. So there we go. There's two. One, one, one for myself, and one with my son. Very nice. Very nice. What's a skill that you haven't mastered yet? Uh, <laughs> Um, Snapchat, there we go. <laughs> I once spoke at, uh, last year I was speaking at a, um, a conference in uh, Canberra. I was speaking on uh, YouTube was my um, topic, but the Snapchat expert didn't turn up. Right. Um, so they said, Mark, can you help us with Snapchat? And I said, of course I can, I lost my fingers. <laughs> Knew nothing about it. I Googled, it. I had a few hours to prepare. Of course. Yeah. Um, it's very, very powerful. It is. Um, young kids love it. Businesses and brands, I'm not quite sure whether they're um, I don't know much about it, but Facebook have tried to buy them three times. Mm. And each time they've bid more. Um, but there you go, Snapchat. And Snapchat. I did have a go with it and I thought, this is dumb. But then I thought <laughs> about, I used to think that about LinkedIn and YouTube, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, Snapchat or Time Sap. I've never heard of that one. So. No, no, Snapchat is a time sap. Oh, well, there you, you know, go. When you've got to learn a new platform. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yes, yes, sorry. Yes. Yeah. That's how it feels to me. Like, it is. Oh, same, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with almost all of the platforms, and the only one that I don't really participate on is Snapchat. No, me neither. But my kids are on there. Yeah, I know. Like, it's for young ones. It's, it's, yeah. it's there. It's their communication tool. It's like texting, but it's via Snapchat. Yeah, just a different version yeah. of it. Version of it. All right, last one. Uh, what's the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Compounding interest. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> the magic. 
The, I think they call it the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. Beautifully said. So there you beautifully go. said. Nice. Mark, thank you so much for coming on the Go All In podcast and spending uh, an hour or so here with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Been a lot of fun doing it face to face as well. I haven't. I need to do more of that. I need to get it out from behind my computer, behind the screen. That's really good. If people want to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Find me across all of the social media platforms. Mark Wardkin, Social Media Selling 123. So go to YouTube, go to LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Connect with me, subscribe to me on all of them. Say hello, send me a message. And who knows where the opportunities um, will be there for, for all of us. Fantastic. We'll make sure all of those links are included in the show notes to this podcast. Mark, as we let you go, mate, have you got a parting comment for us? Embrace the world of social media. It's not going away. It's not a passing fad. And I'd say that from a business perspective, um, you need to embrace it because it is the future. And if we don't embrace it, you will well and truly get left behind. Beautifully said. Thanks again for coming on the show, mate. Really appreciate it. Well, there you have it, folks. What a fantastic episode. Make sure you connect with Mark and get inside of his ecosystem. And if you're listening to this podcast on your phone, just take a peek at your phone and have a look at the show notes and all the links to his website and his socials are right there so you won't have to go around digging for them. And if you're watching this video on Facebook or on YouTube, just scroll down and they're going to be right there in the show notes for you. Make sure as you're looking at those links on your phone that you hit that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss a goal in podcast and you'll always have some motivation and entertainment right at your fingertips and in your ears. And if you like what you heard today, really appreciate a review as that helps out a whole boatload as well. Now, if you've got a question or a comment for the show, you can reach out by the Goal In socials. And if you want to send me an email, you can do that by visiting goalin.com.au to find out more. Well, that wraps it up for the show today. So whatever it is that you're doing, whatever you're working on, get busy, get to it, and go all in. I'll see you next time. <laughs>